Merge your culture, acquire your success. Merge your culture, acquire your success. This is a story about my journey of entrepreneurism and how I've gotten there. In 2004, at the age of 25, especially for you Bryant students watching, I did what most of your parents would not want you to do. I decided at that time I had a great job with a steady income at a great company. But it wasn't enough for me. I wanted something different. I wanted to be challenged. I wanted to innovate. I wanted to be my own boss. And yet with no private equity group, no backing, no financial support to speak of, I had to get creative. I had to innovate. And it all started one day while looking in the back of the most unlikely place, the back of a CPA magazine. First of all, nobody should be reading those things. <laughs> but not only did I read it, I read it cover to cover back in the classifieds. Those don't even exist today. So if you're a Brian, a Brian student currently, you don't even know what a classified ad is. But that's where it started. I found an ad that said CPA firm for sale. And I thought, wow, didn't even know they were for sale. And that's how it all began 13 years ago. In the last 13 years, I've continued to innovate. I've acquired 13 accounting firms and four fitness businesses with my lovely wife who's in the audience over there. What I would tell you is that why, why are private equity groups and public companies the only ones historically who are innovating in this way? Why are they the only ones growing through mergers and acquisitions? Why are small to mid-sized companies who are the drivers of our economy not using it? So let's start with why growth is so important. When you think about growth, it's not just important for the entrepreneur or founder, it's also important for the culture of the company. It's important for the team. It challenges people. It gets them thinking outside their comfort zone. And it all starts with a concept of unique ability. And when I think about unique ability, I think about there's only a few things that most people are good at. Although many people will say, oh, I'm, I'm a jack of all trades, the reality is you're only passionate and excited about a handful of those things. I found very early on in my career that I was really only good at three, three to five of these things. My wife may say I'm not good at any of them, <laughs> but I found that there was three to five that I could wake up every morning excited about and to do. And unique ability doesn't just mean that for that person, it means it for the whole team. Small businesses, unfortunately, get stuck. And not everybody can follow their passion. They haven't grown it to a size that allows everybody to just utilize their expertise. So growth can be that thing that helps the unique ability, that helps the founder and the team get on the same page and build that culture. Build a culture through growth that allows them to think bigger, to build something in a legacy that lasts beyond the founder. Build something that grows, be part of that foundational team. That culture is really helpful when building an organization. It challenges people to learn and grow. It challenges them to get outside their comfort zone. It challenges them to innovate. It also removes the glass ceiling. In most companies, there is an existing glass ceiling that doesn't allow somebody to raise to another level without the company growing or the person above you leaving. That does not sound like collaboration to me. To me, waiting for your boss to leave is not the best solution to learn and grow. However, if a company is growing, you know that there'll always be opportunity for you to fill in over here on a project or fill in over here or help with this new customer. For us, that has helped us in my firm decrease turnover by 50% compared to the industry average. Because removing that glass ceiling has allowed people to continue to be able to do what they want, specialize in different areas, and innovate. So why do we talk about when we think about those things and growth is so important, why do we not talk about mergers and acquisitions as one of the strategies? Mergers and acquisitions is the often ignored third leg of the growth stool to join marketing and sales. And people just don't think about it when you think about small companies. And they should be. And I ask you, how many companies are looking to grow their top and bottom line? How many companies are growing so fast that they're telling their sales and marketing people to slow down, hit the brakes, 
we got to figure it out. The answer to those questions make it so obvious that small and mid-sized companies are, are ignoring a big part of the growth opportunity in mergers and acquisitions, and they need to be thinking about it to provide opportunity for themselves and for their people. And if that doesn't get you excited about an opportunity, let me share a few statistics. First, only 4% of all companies started in the United States get to $1 million in revenue. 4%. That means that the vast majority have already failed. Many statistics show that more than 80% of all companies started in the United States fail within the first five years. The remainder of that are stuck at the smallest of all levels, really self-employed, without leverage and sharing your tools with others. Combine that with the second statistic, which is that 90% of all businesses acquired in the US are still in business five years later. 90% still in business five years later. And nearly two-thirds of all job growth in the United States since the year 2000 have been created by small to mid-sized companies. While large companies have had cuts, the net job growth really exists at the smallest levels. So those reasons tell me that we should be thinking about mergers and acquisitions as a growth strategy. But if those statistics don't do it for you, I'll share a few other intangibles that I have found along my journey of entrepreneurism have been very impactful. The first is that when acquiring a company, not Google, but small companies, when they acquire, are cash flow positive from day one, right? So for you Bryant students watching, this is finance 101. Why would we buy something to lose money? That doesn't make a lot of sense to me as an entrepreneur. But it does make sense in the small business space because they do actually make more money the next day, which gives the business more capital, more availability to re reinvest in people and resources, technology, whatever it might be. Second is that the return on investment can be huge. There's a reason private equity groups have been doing this for years and returning 20 plus percent a year to their investors. Now doing this on your own with your own capital, maybe leveraging a bank, the return on investment in most cases in the small to mid-sized company is 100% plus per year return on investment. It's a pretty good ROI, even with the stock market taking a run and a recent dip, I would tell you that I would bet on the entrepreneur all day long. They change the world. The third thing is that bigger companies are worth more than smaller companies. So if you're running a company of a certain size today and you're trying to grow, why not look at mergers or acquisitions as a way to grow it faster? We already talked about the statistics and show that the 90% are still in business. Why not use that and leverage it? So let's say you buy a company for three times earnings. By plugging in your current resources, growing the company, you can quickly get it and resell it for four times, maybe, combining the two companies together. Another thing that's really helpful in mergers and acquisitions is that there are strategic savings. There are opportunities to find synergies. When you own a company and you're a small business entrepreneur, there are ways to find synergies to cut 10 to 30%. Things like rent and IT infrastructure and software costs, you don't have to pay twice. You already have the infrastructure needs when you acquire a company, you don't double that. I would challenge that the, that the risks are much less than what people really think they are. And then we get to supply and demand. Today is like no other in recent history. Baby boomers are retiring at historic rates, and they control nearly two-thirds of all privately held companies in the United States. Over the next 10 years, it's predicted that all of those businesses will transition. Whether that's they close the door, they sell, they give it to a, the management team, or they pass it on to the next generation, something is going to happen with those businesses. So there's a lot of supply in the market. As for demand, as of July of 2016, the federal government's own surveys and studies showed that it, we were at the lowest point in the last 50 years of businesses being started by people under the age of 30. So where the media believes that there are lots of businesses being started by a young, younger generation, the reality is the studies show quite the opposite. And so there's going to be lack of demand, but there's going to be a lot of supply. 
which provides an opportunity for people who are innovative and thinking about this as a growth strategy to really take that time and really build a business. There's a, there's a great concept out there called no man's land. It talks about businesses that are between this two and eight million dollar range that get stuck. They get stuck because they don't use these concepts. They don't use unique ability. They're, they're too, too stuck in the weeds. They're doing too many things. They're doing HR, accounting, administration, so many things. Mergers and acquisitions can be one of those strategies to help those small to mid-sized companies grow out of that space. And today, with banks and lending where, the way it is, it provides a unique opportunity. Interest rates have been at historic lows for nearly 10 years. Although they have climbed here in the last year and a half, they are still really low. If you look at what a small to mid-sized company could borrow at in 2006, that was somewhere between 10 and 12%. Today, on mergers and acquisitions, they can lend somewhere between 5 and 6.5%. That money goes a lot farther and it saves the business owner a lot in interest expense. It saves them a lot of cost and allows them to reinvest even more in their business. I would challenge you to think about that as the growth strategy. Entrepreneurs are the drivers of our economy. They help us develop and innovate. Each of you should be thinking about the ways that expand your horizon beyond sales and marketing, beyond that to the third leg of the growth stool. I want you to get out there, build your dreams, build your entrepreneurial journey, and make the world a better place. Thank you.